Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three teenagers. I believe that your body does want to and is capable of rebuilding and healing itself, regardless of what chronic disease you may have. And I'm here for you to answer your questions and bring you innovative and cutting edge technology and health solutions to empower you and your ability to reach your optimal state of health. Today, my guest will be talking about the importance of protein and the ketogenic diet and how diet is needed to heal most chronic diseases. But I believe there's two camps in society. One's trying to reverse those chronic diseases and the other is trying to anti-age or increase longevity with the, the different diets and modalities and biohacks. The irony is that aging is a condition associated with the higher risks of the metabolic diseases that we're trying to reverse. So in actuality, these two groups have the same ultimate goal, to reverse chronic disease, which will increase lifespan and slow down the aging process. What if I told you you could take it a step further and reverse your aging? By reversing aging or having your biological age go backwards while your chronicle age goes forward, you will live longer and you will have a higher quality of life that improves with age. So let's look at the basic markers of aging. Oxidative stress and inflammation. And that's why so many people look to antioxidants and anti-inflammatory supplements or diet to increase their longevity. But what are the two things that cause oxidative stress and inflammation? insulin resistance and toxicity. If you're new to following me, I specialize in helping you reverse the chronic disease and ultimately reverse the aging process. You can find my health articles, my cutting edge natural supplements, devices, and protocols at acceleratedhealthproducts.com. I dive into an array of health conditions, their causes and symptoms, and how to address them naturally. I also have put together the most comprehensive cleanse that starts turning back that clock within 30 days, and it comes with free group coaching and scalar frequency enhanced supplements to make that transition easy. And my groups have reported that easy fat loss for those stubborn pounds. And we're going to dive into one of the tricks with our guest today, increased and sustained physical and mental energy, better bowel movements. You got to get the toxins out if you want to heal, decreased uh, appetite and the ability to intermittent fast, clearer skin, wider eyes, better sleep, less moodiness, and something called the phase angle. The phase angle is your cells permeability or the health of the cells. We improve that significantly within 30 days as well. At the end, you are going to successfully flush gallstones and liver stones out of the body and into the toilet. And you will also have a deeper understanding of how to naturally heal your body. And you are taking control of your own health. That is my goal. The difference between me and any other group coaching is I provide the most cutting edge, scalar frequency enhanced supplements that work synergistically with each other and your body doesn't experience those flu-like symptoms. You truly do feel great day one. Leave a comment below if you're interested or check it out on the website, acceleratedhealthproducts.com. Now to the good stuff. We have Maria Emmerich back. She is a nutritionist who specializes in the ketogenic diet and exercise physiology. She struggled with her own health and weight issues through childhood, which led her to become such a passionate nutrition expert. Her expertise has sent her around the world speaking about ketogenic diets. She was talking about keto before any other one, especially any other women, 
were, and I've been following her for years and years. And if you are at a loss for recipes and where to start in the kitchen, she is your go-to girl. She's an international best-selling author of several books, including Quick and Easy Ketogenic Cooking, The 30-Day Ketogenic Cleanse, and she's author authored over 12 books, including the uh, um, three nutritional guidebooks, including the best-selling book, Keto, The Carnivore Cookbook, which is one of my favorites. And now she has the Protein, Protein Sparing Modified Fast Cookbook. Welcome, Ria. How are you today? Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm uh, honored to be here again. You're a pioneer, and um, thank you for your kind words. Oh, well, I mean it when I say it. I've been following you for years and years, and it was so refreshing to have a female to listen mm -hmm. to back in the day when there wasn't anyone, but all these men and they didn't incorporate the, the intricate parts of the female body and how mm -hmm. it relates to diet and hormones and keto and not keto and insulin resistance. So why don't we give a quick snapshot of, of just your journey, um, just to, to bring a lot of a lot of new listeners. So I mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone knows where you have come from. Absolutely. Well, when I was 16 years old, that was over 25 years now, so you can do the math. Um, I wasn't feeling well, and I went to my family doctor, and at that visit, she told me that I had something called PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, which we know now as basically a type 2 diabetes that affects female fertility. Um, and I left that doctor's visit with three powerful prescription drugs given to a young 16 year old it was an acid blocker and it was an antidepressant because i was pretty depressed and it was something for my ibs irritable bowel syndrome and she told me it was nothing that i was doing wrong it was just the cards i was dealt in life but let me tell you i worked at a coffee shop where before high school i would go and i would make the scones and the muffins and the cinnamon rolls and then after school i would go back and we would close about 5 p.m and whatever didn't sell that day I got to go home with. So Sarah, you can make sure that I made extra cinnamon <laughs> rolls that morning. Because I wanted, that's what I wanted for dinner. And so I was living off of caffeine, sugar, and carbohydrates. And even though she told me that it was nothing I was doing wrong, what causes PCOS? There wasn't Google back then, but you could quickly find out that excess caffeine, sugar, and carbohydrates is what causes PCOS. And so I had to change my diet like drastically. And what's interesting is I took my dog Tiva, who was a beautiful golden retriever to the vet that same week. And the first question the vet asked me, what are you feeding her? And it was something that the doctor never asked me. She said it was nothing that I was doing wrong, um, but I knew I had to change my diet and I didn't want to live off of chicken breast and broccoli. And so I just started like creating my favorite foods like cinnamon. I have a protein sparing cinnamon roll that. Is ah. um, so I just started making my favorite things because I still want those. And I'm a picky eater. I'm so picky that I made my best friend's mom cry when I was in high school because I would never eat her food. Mm. And yeah, so I just want people to know if you're a picky eater, don't worry, I got you covered. <laughs> You do. And, you know, keto doesn't have to be um, complicated. The recipes don't have to be complicated or you can have as much fun as you want in the kitchen and get creative. Well, like here's you the thing. a lot of people say, well, I don't have time to cook. Stop. Yeah. Nobody is busier than I am. I'm going to be on a Netflix show next week. I wrote three books this last year. We homeschool our children. I consult clients all day long. Like, I still find, there, you know what's interesting? If I didn't take the time to feed myself well, I couldn't have the time exactly. to do all of that because exactly. I'm much more like laser focused because I do eat this way. And I feel so good. Like my energy is like, I don't do any caffeine. Obviously that caused, you know, a lot of my PCOS. And they, my family jokes on the Energizer Bunny because I just don't stop. 
Yep. And I want to go back to your PCOS. It's funny how insulin resistance type three diabetes is Alzheimer's, right? And now they're, they're actually calling PCOS insulin resistance of the ovaries. And I had it as well. I didn't understand what it was. My doctor didn't give me any answers. They did not ever ask me what my diet was. Um, and I was being, I was fueling off of tons of sugar, no fat, because that's what we were talking back then is to have a low fat diet. And this is interesting because then I switched to um, a ketogenic diet and I've always known that protein really, my body loves protein, mm -hmm. but the whole thought of taking the sugar out and eating a ton of fat made me uncomfortable initially. Um, it definitely helped with my hormones but I still wasn't eating as much fat as everybody out in the keto world was talking about these fat bombs. Oh, you just make a ton of fat bombs. You can have all the macadamia nuts in the world that you want, all of these things. So I want to go through where are people going wrong with keto? Well, and yeah, I, I would say the, the standard American diet is already high fat. It is. We don't need to add any more fat to it, but we may need to change what types of fat we are eating because mm -hmm. most Americans are eating a lot of um, seed oils, hydrogenated oils, canola oil, soybean oil. Like if you look at your salad dressings or, you know, you think you're, you're doing yourself a good job by eating a big old salad, but what, what kind of oils are you using? And even now when you buy even olive oil or coconut oil at the store, you have to be a detective and look at the back because a lot of times it's laced with canola oil or cottonseed oil. These seed oils are causing us to not be able to have a good metabolism anymore or be able to hand, handle carbohydrates and sugar like we once were able to. So first of all, let's get that clear. People are already eating plenty of fat. We don't need to add any more, but there's a big misconception that too much protein turns into sugar. Let's get this clear that chicken is never going to turn into chocolate cake. This is a whole nother thing that's going on. There's certain parts of your body that does need glucose. People think like, oh, you don't need any glucose. There's parts that do. And that's where protein is going to give you that benefit. Um, sometimes people start, especially women, they'll start the ketogenic diet and they'll do fat bombs and they'll drink a big coffee with a bunch of fat in it. Bad idea. First of all, you're too full to eat enough protein and you end up losing your hair. And women are like, oh, I tried the keto diet. I lost my hair yes. and like, I had thyroid issues. Well, yeah, because you didn't eat enough protein. I had a phone client late last night and she was eating about 40 grams of protein and she was like five, nine and she was eating over well over 150 grams of fat. I was like, well, we're going to switch that because you know, we need a lot more protein and then we're going to use fat as a lever. Let's be honest. 99% of people jump on the keto bandwagon because they want to lose weight. Right. And if that's you, then fat is not what you should be chasing. Ketone numbers is not what you should be chasing. Because a higher ketone number doesn't mean better fat burning. Yeah. You should be chasing your protein macro, which I have a free calculator for everybody to find out because they're like, what's the protein macro? Um, everybody has a different macro. You have a different one than I do. And protein is the goal. Protein is the one you have to hit. Fat is a lever. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going to turn that fat lever down. And I give you the range of where to get that fat in. And then carbohydrates is a maximum you're going to keep try to keep that as low as possible and you can go under on the the carb you know ma uh, macro but a lot of people are like oh maria i didn't hit my fat macro for the day that's okay that's a good thing <laughs> then you will use your body fat for fuel but if you're always stuffing your body with a lot of dietary fat it doesn't have to go through the process of using your own body fat for fuel and that's a complete opposite of what people, most people are reaching towards. And that's why I get really sad because, you know, when people find out what I do or whatever, like, oh yeah, I tried keto, it didn't work for me. And I'm like, did you eat a bunch of dairy and a bunch of nuts, like a bunch of macadamia nuts or whatever? Then you're probably going to end up failing and not seeing the results um, end up with constipation or gut issues because you're living off of dairy and nuts, completely opposite of what I have my clients do. I'm the same when I take my clients through, if they tell me that's their goal, I tell them 
eliminate the nuts and the dairy, not forever, just for now. Let's get them out and then you can bring them back in and test when you get to your to your goal. Because in nature, fat and carbs don't come together unless nuts, right? I believe nuts are the only place where you will actually see fat and carbs together. And it's the and dairy, I would say. And like dairy. Milk yes, is a and, lot of fat and a lot of carbs. Yep. And, and dairy. Um, one thing that you touched on is chasing ketones. And I will never forget when I first was introduced to the a ketogenic or a, a ketone supplement. And I was looking at my blood ketones going, oh gosh, my ketones are higher than I had a friend that was in ketosis naturally, no supplements. And she was an iron woman. Okay. So here she is an amazing athlete in a naturally ketogenic state, her ketone level was lower than mine. And I was giving myself a pat on the back saying, oh my gosh, I'm doing better than she is. Mm -hmm. But no, her body knew how to produce ketones and utilize them. I was um, falsely putting in ketones into my body and my body hadn't started using them in the proper way. So what I wanted to get into is, can you go through how the body metabolizes fat if you're eating too much fat versus what happens if you're eating the carbs and the protein as it relates to insulin resistance? Well, what I was going to touch on is like you mentioned, she was an iron woman. I, I run in a fasted state, yes. so my ketones are very low. And plus, I've been doing it for over 25 years. My body is very metabolically efficient at using the ketones. So when people, they see their ketones numbers go down and sometimes they're mistakenly using like um, urine strips, which basically only work in the first week or two and they tell you if you're hydrated or not. So don't chase the ketones, especially with the urine strips because you'll just get de depressed about that. But your body um, can either be in a negative or a positive fat flux. You're always in this fat flux mode, okay? And it's always going in and out. And mistakenly, people think, oh, if I just eat a bunch of dietary fat and I'm in ketosis, it's just going to shoot through me. No, they've tested the stools. And whether you're eating high fat, low fat, whatever, only about 10% go through the stools. Okay. If anything more than goes through that, you end up with diarrhea. Um, do you remember the wow chips? <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Olestra. That's what happens if more fecal matter, more fat gets through the fecal matter. We don't want that to happen because it's very uncomfortable and embarrassing. So to think that when you eat dietary fat, it has, you know, it just shoots through you. That's not true. It actually goes right to your fat stores. And then you get into this negative and positive fat flux, depending on if you're exercising, how active you are. Um, you know, what you're eating, what you're, you know, if you're pregnant, whatever, it's going to be in this negative fat flux or not. Um, if you are eating a lot of carbohydrates, that is what your body is going to burn before it burns any fat, protein, or body fat per fuel. It's all about this oxidative priority. So if you're looking at the different fuels your body can use for energy, the first one is alcohol because we don't have any storage capacity site and it's completely toxic. So that's the first one. Let's just cut that out because it's a depressant. You know, it makes you sleep terrible. Like it's not good. So get rid of that. The next one is exogenous ketones, a big waste of money. In my opinion, uh, I usually gain weight if I ever try them. Sure. My ketones go higher, but the problem is when people add these fake ketones, they also think that they can eat the muffin, eat all the sugar and the carbs and just take this ketone supplement and they'll be in ketosis, right? What's happening is we have high glucose and high ketones. I think that's a very dangerous space to be in. We don't know a lot about it yet. To me, that sounds like a recipe for cancer because cancer loves excess fuel. Um, and then, so we get rid of the uh, alcohol, get rid of the exogenous ketones, and then we're gonna go to carbohydrates and the carbs, we have a limit, we have a pretty good, you know, storage capacity site. Um, however, if you're, you know, eating carbohydrates, it stops, it holds on to fat and carbs or fat and protein. So it's going to burn that next. And then it's going to go to protein and then it's going to burn the fat and then you can get into body fat. So you have to go through all five of those 
before you actually tap into body fat. So if you just get rid of the alcohol, the exogenous ketones and the carbohydrates, the protein you eat is going to help build muscle. It's going to help like with your hair follicles. It's going to help with your skin. Um, it helps with so every like the protein has these amino acids. You're familiar with amino acids with your supplements. Yeah. Those are the building blocks that everybody wants. That's the one, the supplements they take. If they focus on animal protein, that's where the amino acids come from. Okay. Yeah. So that's where protein, most of it's going to go towards building muscle, um, building all the different parts of your body, um, the, your bones. Sometimes when uh, women, they start prioritizing protein, they don't see the scale go down, but they're they're shrinking. Their, their clothes right. are getting tight, smaller, or I, their clothes are getting bigger because their body's shrinking. And a lot of it's what's going on is that when they get like a DEXA scan of their bone mass, their bone and muscle is changing completely. The bone is basically made up of mineralized protein. So if you are suffering from osteopenia, osteoporosis, you can reverse that with a high protein diet. Okay. And like they, a lot of doctors don't believe you can reverse osteopenia or osteoporosis because the studies they were doing is just um, supplementing with excess calcium. And as you know, most calcium supplements are very poorly absorbed unless it's calcium hydroxyapatite. Um, but you can reverse it with good vitamin K2 and a lot of protein. Protein is the most important thing to help reverse that bone loss. Um, but also when you look at someone, um, say they're 150 pounds, but their body fat percentage is 50% over here and 25% over here, same weight on the scale, their body composition is gonna be look, looking way different just because of their muscle mass. And so a lot of that is going to change and muscle. I mean, you can go pretty high on protein. You can go really high on protein and really there's no weight gain to happen unless you're adding a bunch of fat or carbohydrates. And like you said, right. fat plus carbohydrates cause weight gain. And that's right. nuts. That's mostly dairy. Uh, avocado to me is fat and carbs together. So focusing on the animal protein, that's where people start to heal. And that's why I've really gotten into the space calling a protein sparing modified fast. It's really a, just a pure protein day. And it's not every day you do this, but with the P PCOS, weight loss was very difficult for me. The reason I stayed on this diet was because my depression went away right away, but mm -hmm. weight loss was very difficult. And in order to lose weight, I needed to do pure protein days and I did them three days a week. And that's where I ramped up the protein. I lowered the fat, basically had zero carbohydrates. And people are like, oh, what do you eat then? Sounds boring, like egg whites. No, I have delicious recipes. I have a chocolate pudding. I have, um, I just posted a bread pudding recipe on my website today. Like food can be delicious and it still can be very nutritious. Absolutely. I want to go back to the amino acid comment because it is shown, number one, a carnivore diet and a, a protein-based diet heals the gut. I mean, mm -hmm. how many of your clients came to you and nothing else, let alone the weight loss? Yes, most people want the weight loss. But mm -hmm. what about just getting rid of the brain fog and the thyroid issues and the hormonal issues and the gut issues? When I go out and eat something that I know just wasn't good for my gut, I'll do a couple days of almost all protein just to, to do a reset. And my body feels so much better because there aren't any allergies, quote unquote, from wild, good animal protein. Mm -hmm. And the amino acids are what trigger that CCK hormone in your gut mm -hmm. and tells your brain, oh, I've got plenty of fuel. I'm good to go. Yep. And this is why we can eat a whole can of, of Pringles potato chips, right? I mean, you and I could easily do that, or but we're not going to binge on a prim, prime rib steak or a you know wild salmon, something like that. But that's, and I want to ask you what your advice is for someone that's that's hard pressed and says I'm vegan. I ask them, are you vegan or vegetarian? Because I work with them. Because a you think it's healthy, b it's your religious re for, you know religious re reasons, or because you love animals so much that you just can't do it. 
Because if it's the first reason, because you think it's healthy, sit down because I'm going to teach you why it's not and how all vegetables have anti-nutrients and it causes a lot of damage. And people think, oh, if you're only eating protein, how do you go number two? You talked about, you know, eliminating daily is very important. Listen here, your body doesn't need fiber. Fiber actually is a menace. I like to think of fiber as steel wool to your intestines, causing a lot of damage. If you think of somebody with Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis, the first thing the doctor tells them to do is cut all the fiber out, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's damaging the gut. It's, caught, it's like steel wool scraping against your intestines. But the colon does need a lot of salt. And what happens is when you go keto or carnivore, you're eating these foods that don't have salt. They don't have sodium. You're not eating the Pringles. You're not eating a McDonald's milkshake has more sodium than the French <laughs> fry does. So when you eliminate all those packaged foods and you're just eating the salmon or the eggs or whatever, you need to be very cognizant about adding more salt to it. And usually you need to add it to your water in addition because you can't just drink more water. You're just going to urinate out more and doing too much water without the sodium is just going to dehydrate you even more. That right. causes low moods, heavy legs, walking upstairs, constipation. Um, adding more salt is going to give you energy. It's going to lift your moods. It's going to help with constipation. Um, but I'm coming back to your question. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Being a vegan or a vegetarian. Yeah, I would say if they think it's healthy, they need to sit down with me. And I have a whole carnivore course showing about the anti-nutrients. Yeah. I mean, if you think about almost every fruit and vegetable out there has anti-nutrients. And those are the, the plant's way of protecting itself Um Oxalates, that's a huge one. Like kiwi has a bunch of oxalates, um, potatoes and all that. And they're like little crystals that are all over in the fruit. And when you get rid of the oxalates, when you stop eating them, you'll notice oxalate dumping. You might see, I had styes in my eyes when I was about 18. Um, some people see crystals coming out of their skin. Yeah. Um, but the oxalates, they bind to minerals and they build up in places. Kidney stones... It's not caused from protein. It's called from, caused from oxalates where the oxalates bind to calcium and get built up in the kidneys. So um, someone with uh, kidney stones, I would say, let's get a high dose of vitamin K2 and get rid of the oxalates for sure. Oxalate dumping is something that I've experienced this whole this year, and I've uh, really focused on oxalates and getting them out of the diet. And I say to everybody, so I don't care what you're eating, everybody needs to get rid of spinach and almonds today. Mm -hmm. And they, those are the worst offenders because I had a, I had them coming out of my skin. I had them coming out of my face and it was a rash. And then it, what people don't understand is it's causing Hashimoto's. And I also had past a kidney stone, Maria. Oh, wow. I've experienced all of it and now I feel great. Good. And it's, it's amazing. And going back to the salt, you want to make sure you're eating using a proper salt that has is full of the minerals. The the salt and the sodium in the McDonald's milkshake is stripped down sodium, and that's why you get bloated in the face and bloated all over the body. It doesn't and taste right. right, and it doesn't taste like true true um, salt. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and continue on all about protein and the importance of how to do keto right with Maria.
Welcome back to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta, the owner of Accelerated Health Products. And today we have Mir Maria Emmerich on talking all things protein and keto and doing it the right way. Um, I wanted to touch on the question that came up by Amanda about how to test your ketones. And you tell me if you feel any different, Maria. I would say I do the breathalyzer because you don't want to do the urine strips, as you mentioned, and a blood ketone test really tells you how much how many ketones are in your blood but not how your body's utilizing ketones and really doesn't matter how do you feel is what I would say is it, do you feel like you can go hours without eating you're probably in ketosis I would say they're a waste of money don't spend the money or the time chasing a ketone um, if you follow my recipe and meal plans you will be in ketosis yeah um, and Again, what are your goals? If it's to lose weight, don't even stress out about the keto number at all. Focus on other spark things. Don't waste your time or money on a keto number. Perfect. Well, I, you and Craig have talked about the way to reverse insulin resistance, which is a key to weight loss, um, mm -hmm. to shrink the fat cells, and that your fat cells have become over fat, essentially. Oh and growing your muscles. If you could take us through that, that would it's really helpful for people to understand um, why protein is important and not overeating fat. Well, reversing insulin resistance, like you said, you have overstuffed fat cells because people who are thin can still have insulin resistance. And what's interesting, I had a client who was really struggling and she's like, I'm just going to get, she was already on metformin and other diabetes medications. She was like, I'm just going to get um, uh, liposuction. And I said, let me tell you, if you do that, you will never get off medication because you are eliminating some of your fat cells. So the ones that you have left, they are going to get even overstuffed because you're not, she didn't want to change your diet. And so mm -hmm. her insulin resistance is going to get much, much worse. It's not how many fat cells you have. It's how stuffed they are. Wow. So this yeah. is why you can see someone who is thin and still has type 2 diabetes. I had a client who had type 2, type two diabetes so bad, she was having strokes and she was only 110 pounds. Wow. But she just had her first baby and she's like maria i need to change my diet because i'm gonna die otherwise and she said you know what i wish that i would gain weight when i cheated because we're a very vain society this was probably 20 years ago we talked about it but it stuck with me because we are we don't change anything until it shows up on the outward appearance and makes us uncomfortable because yeah. to me she looks super healthy she right. looked vibrant and everything, but she had so much inflammation going on and her fat cells were so stuffed, even though she didn't have a lot of them. So I don't like it when they're like, oh, my husband, he's thin. He doesn't need to lose any weight. Does that still mean he should be eating the Pringles and the McDonald's milkshake? No, right. it doesn't. Right. Eating right. this way. My kids, they don't need to lose any weight. They're 11 and 12, but do they eat this way? Absolutely. They love this way of eating too. They know no different. Um, and do you as parents have the power to change their palates, which I don't know what we're thinking. Like, oh, let's just reward our children with a bunch of sugar. And then when they turn 18, 25, whatever, then they have to learn how to change their diet. I'm grateful I had to change my diet at 16 because now my friends are in their 40s and they're like, help. For having an addiction for 40 years is much harder to change than when you're a teenager or a child. So that's why I really want this message to go through to parents. I uh, I echo that. I mean, I don't understand what our society is doing with our kids because they came out, they're innocent, right? They don't They don't have to know what a McDonald's hamburger tastes like. No. You're the one that's serving them. They don't have the money paying for this stuff. Once they're teenagers and can drive, then you've lost some control. Right. But you, you need to instill these these um, things. And if you've noticed, as you're talking about, the people that are naturally thin through high school and their younger years are the ones that probably have more metabolic diseases later on because there were there wasn't the vanity of needing to exercise or care about what they were eating to restrict them or 
steer them in a direction that was possibly on the healthier path. Um, it, it is something that I'm very passionate about. And now my kids are, you know, out of my control as teenagers. And I said, I, you know what, I've taught you what I've taught you. I'll tell them what I'm not going to pay for and what's coming out of their pocket. But it's great because they've learned from me and they're going to choose to make their decisions now based on a good, strong, healthy education. But it's it's something that really needs to be um, talked a lot about. Right. But going back to your original question about, you know, protein versus fat when it comes to insulin resistance, I know many Aikido experts, so-called experts that um, eat a very high fat ketogenic diet and their OMA IR is up through the roof. And the OMA IR really shows you a lot about what's going on with your insulin and your glucose numbers. And when it gets above two, that's when you're in this danger zone or, you know, a red flag is going to go up. Um, like I told you, fat has one place to go and it's to your fat cells. Protein is going to be the building blocks to so many things. Um, and it really doesn't go to storage at all. It's not, there's really no storage for it. It's going to be all these building blocks. And if you sit down to, like you said, a huge filet mignon or something, there comes a point where you're not going to eat anymore. But when you do those fat bombs or you drink your liquid calories, it's really easy to throw a thousand calories down in a liquid form. Like these bulletproof coffees, they're good 600 calories. If you put a few tablespoons of butter in a few tablespoons of MCT oil, some heavy cream, and you stir it on up and you have a milkshake and then you drink it. And they think that they're fasting because they didn't eat any protein or carbs. You're mistaking yourself. You just ate 600 calories of pure fat and that goes to storage. So, and that's when people, you know, get into this, you know, trouble of having bad numbers, bad triglyceride numbers and all of that, because, you know, what in an excess, that's where it's going to go. I mean, I'm not saying don't eat any fat, but I'm just saying if you're replacing the carbohydrates that you once ate with a bunch of like a butter on your steak, let's, let's talk about this, Sarah, our ancestors, when they would eat a woolly, woolly mammoth, did they go get the butter churner out to make some butter and put on top of that woolly mammoth? No, they did not. They just ate the woolly mammoth and the fat that was in that animal. They didn't add butter to the steak. They just ate the steak. Right. I, I 100% agree. Well, so then the other thing that you promote for for is because of we need to grow muscles, especially as we get older. And there's this misnomer, same within the keto community, that the elderly need to eat less protein, but they actually need to eat more yeah. because we have a harder time absorbing those nutrients. And I mentioned the, the word phase angle and the the cells permeability, and that's the ability of cells to allow the toxins out and nutrients in. That goes down as we age. So we actually need more protein for our body to be able to break down the protein into the amino acids and you know get rebuilt into these muscles. But how is this, can you explain how this helps with the insulin resistance as well? Yeah, there's definitely a bell curve when it comes, you need a lot of protein when you're a child, and a baby is like the amount of protein in breast milk is outrageous. But what's sad is we replace the breast milk with these Franken foods that are made for babies. And, you know, especially the, the baby purees of peas and carrots and all that, they should be eating basically animal protein. Um, that's what my kids ate. But there's definitely a bell curve, you know, that it goes, you know, evens out, but then it goes right back up as we age for multiple reasons, sarcopenia and all of that. Um, but how does it reverse insulin resistance? Because first of all, it's going to help you shrink the fat cells. If you replace all of those fat calories and the, um, carb calories with more protein, first of all, the protein is going to help build the muscle and lose the fat cell, the, the fat cell, the, let the fat cells shrink. I should say, you're not going to lose them. They're just going to shrink. And when you grow the muscle that gives you more metabolic efficiency so your insulin has more places to go and you're going to basically lose fat, gain muscle, your body composition gets better, your movement gets better, you can walk easy, you can, 
you know, move your body more. You can go play with your kids on the floor, your grandkids on the floor, whatever. That muscle is going to give you so much more um, ability to do the things that you love and want to do. And again, it's going to give you better blood sugar numbers because you're shrinking the fat cells and increasing the muscle. Something that you've touched on, though, and I want to make sure we get to this because I've had clients who are saying, Sarah, I am fast intermittent fasting I'm on a low carb diet, but my blood glucose is high in the morning. What is going on? There's something called the dawn phenomenon, and that's where the cortisol will rise in the morning. That's what essentially wakes you up. If they would move their meal. So if they're doing intermittent fasting, they don't eat till maybe like two o'clock. If they would shift their eating window earlier in the day, that most likely would go away. Um, so, but instead of worrying about, you know, I would say, what is a high glucose number, first of all? Because if it's, you know, 100, 110, I really wouldn't worry about it. If it's, you know, 170, yeah, we're going to think about things. But looking at other numbers um, and the overall even part of the day and if they do wake up with that high number, it often is they ate too much fat the day before. Interesting. Yeah. And why would that be? Because they overstuff they the fat flux. They have too much um, fuel going into their body. So if they lowered the fat, so some people think that calories don't matter. If you say that calories don't matter, that's just ignorance. I mean, there's something called physics that come into play. <laughs> and yes, our bodies are different. Yes, our hormones are different. But how our bodies process nutrients is the same. There's not, whether you're male, female, whatever, a baby or a, you know, a grown adult, the way your body processes fuels is the same. And when you have too much fuel going into your gas tank, you're over flooding it, causing your numbers to be too high. I want to touch on something that we haven't even touched on. And that is, and this was something that I um, suffered from over a year ago, I learned that I was fat malabsorbed and I actually had a hard time breaking down fat, which affects your gallbladder and your liver. And mm -hmm. if you feel nauseous by when you eat a, too much fat, that's your liver and your gallbladder screaming at you saying too much. I can't even handle what you're trying to give me, let alone. I don't want it in the first place. Um, so it's a, it, there's a, a lot of different mechanisms that are going and you just need to start listening to your body. And, and um, I, I stripping away the fat and focusing on the protein you are eliminating so many of the issues that are causing the IBS and the gut issues, the plant, the plant poisons that we've been talking about, the inflammatory oils, which are worse for you than sugar and, yes. and uh, on its own, right? Sugar's in and out of your body within what, 24 hours, the oils are staying with you for over a year. And people think, oh, I'm in ketosis. And a lot of people, I'm sure everyone comes to you and says, well, what about this keto snack that I saw, packaged snacks? I'd rather you have a high carb whole food diet than to be eating keto processed foods. That's the thing, you know, with the popularity of keto, uh, it's been a blessing and a curse. I, I actually liked it when I was the crazy keto lady decades ago and nobody else was talking about it because now with the popularity of keto comes, first of all, a lot of bad advice where you have to eat a bunch of fat, protein turns into sugar, um, drink your bulletproof coffee and all of that. But then also these keto breads that you find at Costco and these keto bars, everybody's like, What's a good protein bar? I was like, it's called a beef stick. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it is. Um, but all of these keto pizzas and bars and whatever it is, it's just if it comes out of a package, think twice. I wouldn't eat it. Yeah. If it comes if it comes out, I mean, the packages I like are eggshells. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and I think you also like uh, when you can't cook for yourself is are the carnivore crisps. Those oh, are something yes. that I love because they're two packaged ingredients. two ingredients and they're well, the ingredients you need. Yep. Well, yeah. you um I wanted you to touch. We just have a couple minutes left. People say, well, this is too restrictive. I can't stick to this diet. So what do you do when say someone says I want a cheat day? 
Um, I would say, first of all, I feel like I'm cheating all the time. What do you want to cheat with? Because I probably have a recipe for you. Okay. Um, no matter, I have a recipe for a pop tart, man. I mean, whatever <laughs> you want. If you, and here's what I like to tell people. When people told me, Maria, you have um, PCOS so bad you can't have your own children. Did I get depressed about it? Maybe for a hot minute. But then you know what? I was like, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to bring children into my life that I can change and I can help and give them, you know, parents that they need and want and love. Same thing about your diet. If you just walk around and be like, oh, woe is me. I can't have any bread. I can't have any pasta. I can't have rice. You will fail. You will fail if you have that attitude. And guess what? Nobody really wants to be around that attitude. But if you change your attitude in all aspects of your life, including your diet, you will be drawn to positivity. You will be much more successful in all aspects of your life and you will be much happier. But let me tell you, if you miss bread, I've got a great bread recipe. If you miss rice, I've got a great rice recipe, but you have to work for it. And it's definitely worth the work of making it. Well, and what you just said, it's all an attitude and it's not when you start feeling better and eating better physically, you're mentally going to be in a better place. You're going to have more energy to go do things. You're going to be more in connection with your higher self. It all is one in the same and they all and work you're together. You're going to be a better mother. You're going to be a better yeah. parent. You're going to be a better spouse. You're going to be a better friend. You're going to be a better neighbor. Like, it's amazing what you put in your mouth can affect so many aspects of your life. Yeah. And people don't realize the power of that. Absolutely. I mean, you are an amazing person to follow. Uh, and just the, the mothering that you do with your two boys is so enlightening and so um encouraging and motivating. And I really do look to you and I know that, you know, with my kids, kids are kids. They're not always easy, but I can tell you if you feed them better, they'll be a lot easier, right? Hormonally and mm -hmm. just mood wise, they will be easier to parent. Well, Maria, before we go, make sure let's tell everyone where they can find you and where to find your awesome cookbooks, which I've got a couple of them in my kitchen. Thank you. Um, you can go to ketomaria.com and there you can find my website that has thousands of free recipes and you can also find my support. If you go to ketomaria.com and go way to the bottom, you'll see my YouTube channel where I cook with my kids. You'll find my private Facebook groups for support. You will find me cooking with Halle Berry and all of that type of fun stuff. But Sarah, you tell me what books you don't have and I am mailing them today for you. Awesome. Well, I'm going to give you a list because I'm going to get, get my, my kids. I've got a couple of them, but I would love a library of them. I pass them out to my clients all the time. And you also do keto coaching. So touch on that. I do. I can't actually keep up with clients anymore. So I started basically a keto college because what I learned in college was bad, bad, bad nutrition advice. Um, and so um, my husband and I started the keto college. So if you are inspired to help others change their life because you've changed yours, come become one of my certified keto coaches. That's all you get all of these certifications. You get support for life. Um, you get to use my recipes and meal plans that I've perfected. Um, we actually put it into a business in a box. So we have a website. You don't even have to create a website. We have a website where you could put your uh, logo on it, your name. All you need to do is to provide the phone consults and the email support. And we give you everything else, the business in a box for you to succeed. I don't know who wouldn't do that right now. We're all on some sort of lockdown, finding a business at home that you've got an amazing teacher and you're getting healthy at the same time. And I can tell you as a health coach, there's nothing better than to keep yourself on track than to have other people keep you um, accountable for what you're doing. So, so true. Thank you, Maria, so much for being here. And thank you, everybody else, for joining us today. If I can help you with any of your issues, you can contact me directly through the website or Sarah at acceleratedhealthproducts.com. And also, you can find this um, episode in all of my episodes over a uh, 100 channels, YouTube channel and uh, Facebook under Accelerated Health Radio. 
can find it on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, or whatever podcast platform you subscribe to. If you like what you heard today, please comment below and tell me what you learned and hit the subscribe button and share this with a few of your friends who may need Maria's help. Aww. You can join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. You can also use coupon W4HC20 for 20% off site-wide. As you support Accelerated Health products, I'm able to bring you this show and all of the amazing guests. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Maria. Bye.